Dude, that thing is freaking quiet. It was whisper quiet. Holy moly. I think the thump of the bullet hitting him was louder than the gunshot. No doubt. He told me on a bolt gun it's whisper quiet. Man, that thing sounds like a 22. Oh, yeah. That is awesome. There is absolutely no way that we could have got away with that without that suppressor. I agree. No way. 100%. That's a 55 grain 243 and it's the muzzle velocity on it's about 4,000 foot a second. It's smoking coming out of there. And without that suppressor on there, it is loud. Oh, yeah. Well, it seems we found ourselves out on yet another hot summer night trying a new arrival to the team, my long-awaited suppressor from SRT Arms. We were scoping out a pasture littered with dead pigs, hoping to catch a few coyotes out on the move. And let's just say it didn't take long at all to find what we were looking for. We might be able to get on that fence and go down the fence until we get to that tank over there follow that ditch up to that tank and try to kill them. I, they don't seem like they've got too much on the brain. No, they're just over there messing around. That's right about where we killed all those pigs. I'm sure those pigs are probably keeping them pretty occupied. I bet we can get up on them. They don't seem too spooked. All the cows are right over here, so I don't think we got anything to worry about there. Oh, right here, right here. Dude, there's a cow right there. Sure enough. He's coming, man. This was the very first time we had a chance to use this particular suppressor out in the field, and we figured why not just break it in on a coyote. We chose this specific suppressor from advice from the O'Neill Ops guys in South Dakota. It's called a Vapor, and if it's everything they say it is, for us, it'll be a complete game changer. There was whisper quiet. Holy moly. I think the thump of the bullet hitting him was louder than the gunshot. No doubt. That is awesome, man. What what in the heck did we do for 15 years <laughs> worth of hunting with a cannon? What a loud gun. Yeah. <laughs> James and, uh, and Keith, I asked them when I went looking for a suppressor. They told me SRT Vapor. That's the ticket. And that's what it is, man. He told me on a bolt gun, you put that thing on a bolt gun, it's whisper quiet. Man, that thing sounds like a 22. Oh, yeah. That is awesome. That's pretty cool. And that coyote didn't flinch. <laughs> <laughs> and them, them coyotes are still over there. They I did bet they barely them. even heard that. If they heard it, it's not bothering them none. That right there is the reason why a suppressor is such an advantage over a normal gun. Oh, yeah. Guarantee you, coyotes would have heard that in the next county if that had been the other one. Yeah. Let's go look at this one, then go get them. Yeah, right. Try to sneak up on him over there. Yeah. Didn't look like he's very far. No, he was close. 
Now we do realize for some, hunting with a suppressed rifle is old, if not ancient news, because they have been around for a while now. But there is something to be said about the day you get to use, your very own for the first time. Believe it or not, there's still tons of hunters out there not running suppressors who have no clue what they're missing out on. And once you've experienced hunting and shooting suppressed, you'll never want to look back. And we're super excited to finally be able to run one of our own. Oh yeah, that's, that's a full grown one, for sure. I looked up, I can see him with my naked eye without the, without oh, the yeah, thermal. Oh yeah, in this moon. I thought I could hear something walking, so I looked up and that sucker was right there. It's nice to kill those great big ones like that this time of year. Man, this wind, I think the wind shifted, Ronnie. You know what we need to do? If we go all the way down on the far west fence, we have to go back to the north about three or four hundred yards and there's a cross fence that we'll have to cross which that's probably going to be the hardest part but once we get down there far enough we can cross the fence and use you see that brush pile over there he's probably not he's probably not a couple hundred yards from that brush pile if, if we can make it to the to the brush pile i think we, we can pull it off yeah, we can get him killed can you believe that thing is still sitting there i don't think you ever heard it man huh i don't think you ever heard that other shot i mean that's we're probably, we're probably not 500 yards from where we just shot that other cow. out. He don't act spooked at all. No. He's over there chilling out. Let's do this, let's walk. We need to go all the way to that far west fence. Let's just start easing that way. This pasture had dead pigs all over it, and we had our fingers crossed the smell of decaying pork would be enough to hold this coyote's attention long enough for us to make it through the fence and about 75 yards to a brush pile in the middle of this field. It was bright enough out he would have no problem picking us out if we made a move at the wrong time. So we just kept an eye on him and moved super slow every time he put his head down. Once we made it through the fence, we were on the home stretch to get where we needed. It wasn't really that far away, but it felt like a mile trying not to get busted. The plan was to put the brush between us and the coyote, with hopes that it would keep us hid long enough just to close the gap. It wasn't even really much of a brush pile either, and a time or two I thought we'd been made, but he eventually put his head right back down and kept eating. I felt if we could just make it to the brush, it would put us close enough to get his attention. Sometimes coyotes with their attention focused on a plentiful food source like this can be so distracted at what they have in front of them. It can honestly make it difficult just to get their attention. And we found from experience the solution is often just to get close enough. They simply can't ignore your calls, or in this case, a minimal little lip squeak. Are you ready? Yep. Here he comes, man. Holy yeah, smokes, man. Oh, that'll work. I'm calling it. I'm calling it right now. There is absolutely no way that we could have got away with that without that suppressor. I agree. No way. 100%. You can call me a liar, whatever you want to call me, but there's no way. We just shot that coyote, what's that, 400 yards? Yeah. And this sucker wasn't spooked at all. No. No. I mean, heck, he might have looked up one time when we shot, but he just went right back to eating on pigs. It's pretty amazing. There's probably 10 or 12 pigs laying all over this pasture. Mm -hmm. And all we had to do was just walk up and just give them just a little. That was all it took. Boop, it, here he comes right straight to us. It didn't take much. No, shoot, no. Not much at all. You, did you see the back leg? Yeah, was he miss, missing his back leg or what? I could swear he's only got three legs. I may be totally wrong, 
but he, I know he was limping for sure. He sure looked like he only had three legs to me. Let's go look at that dude. The proximity of these two coyotes as a crow flies was no more than 500 yards tops, yet the second coyote hung around even after the first shot. I would have to say the vapor is in fact all it was said to be, and then some. Yep, yeah, sure as hell is. Check out his leg. That dude, <laughs> wonder what happened there. I don't know, but he's got a complete, that's a nub. There ain't no leg there. He's been healed over for a long time. That's an old cow. You can check out his teeth. That's an old, old, yep. look at that, he's, that's an older coyote than the other one. He's missing his bottom uh, canine right there, look at that. He sure as heck is. That's two old male, yep, two, two old male coyotes right there. He's yeah. over in dirt, that's I know. one of his first rodeo. I knew whenever he was coming, I, I was like, man, he's he's gotta be missing a leg or something, because. But he didn't, you know, it's weird. He wasn't really limping. Yeah. It's just like he was walking normal just with three legs. They're tough, man. That looks like that thing was surgically removed and patched up. How does that happen? There's a fence, maybe. I don't, I don't think know. a whole lot of people around here trap. No. That wasn't a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> I like smelling like coyote. Yet again, good shooting. My friend, you're a freaking dead eye with that thing right now. Don't jinx me. I'm going to throw a few air balls. That one is a freaking heavy one too. Holy cow. Old nubby. Dude, that, that sucker's heavy. Stinky too. Oh yeah. <laughs> Smell that. Tell me if that stinks. Oh, I know it stinks. Come on, man. I thought we were buddies. We are buddies. <laughs> Just sticking a turd again. Huh? Sticking a turd again. I believe oftentimes guys get intimidated about the process you have to go through to get a suppressor. But trust me when I say the reward is worth the effort. It took me exactly 410 days from the time I sent in my paperwork until everything was finally approved. But knowing what I know now and how much we've enjoyed using it, I'd honestly be willing to wait twice that long if I had to. The best advice I can give to someone thinking about taking that initial step is do the paperwork, send it in, and forget about it. It's a long process and just takes time. The only regret I personally have is not sending in multiple suppressor applications at the same time, just so I could have two to three different suppressors for different calibers. Of course, hindsight is always 2020, but I don't even want to shoot my other guns after shooting this one suppressed. I guess this means it's time for me to hurry up and wait yet another 400 plus days for the rest of my suppressors. Where the heck did that one come from? It just makes it so much nicer on everyone around you when shooting. Truthfully, I feel like the government has the entire concept of a suppressor completely backwards. Suppressors don't do anything but make a gun quieter, period. It doesn't make it any more lethal than before. This is simply a misconception created by all the left-wing gun control groups who try to use that same excuse every single year as a pawn to push their own agenda. Heck, if it were up to me, I would make suppressors mandatory on every single firearm sold in America. Because the only thing they actually do is make hunting and shooting sports more enjoyable for you and everyone else around you. Maybe we should take all those people claiming suppressors are bad out one night and shoot through a few boxes of this 243 without the vapor on it. They'd be begging for us to put that suppressor back on there. It's clearly a lack of understanding about hunting or how guns work in general on their part. 
So it's up to people like you and me to help them see, hey, suppressors aren't bad. They're actually a good thing for everyone, including the non-hunter. The way I see these situations is it's us against them, and someone needs to educate them on actual facts. It's bad enough they want to take our rights away as hunters, but this situation over something that does nothing more than make a gun quieter and protect your hearing in the process has no foundational basis whatsoever and makes zero sense. We were so impressed with the vapor, we decided to test it out one afternoon with a decibel meter just for the heck of it. I've always wanted to know how much those things actually, how much sound they actually reduce. Yeah. yeah. And it should, once a decibel level pops up, it should tell us right there, max decibels, what it is. I bet that thing's going to be super loud. <laughs> Here you go. This is without the vapor. Holy smokes, that is, oh my gosh, that's loud. <laughs> Put that thing back on there, please. <laughs> that test showed a 25 decibel sound reduction, which is huge. It takes a muzzle blast that's borderline unbearable and turns it into something that makes shooting fun. This was my first chance on the gun in a while, and I've got my sights on a big cat. This was the second encounter I've had with this particular cat. The first time he managed to get away from me, so it was game on for round two. Holy cow, I can't believe we got away with that. That's not a bad cat, Ronnie. Yeah. Is that a male or a female? That is a male. male. For a summertime cat, that's a pretty good one. It's a little bit different being behind the camera, isn't it? I know it. I was wanting to get you and the cat in the frame. That sucker started working to the left down that tree line. I thought, well. I guess keep the cat in the frame, but... Tyler wanted me to try this thermal scope, and it's got the uh, recording capability. I'm pretty impressed, man. Look, Ultimate night vision comes through again. Always. Look pretty cool through the scope. Is oh. Clear? Dude. <laughs> I don't know what your perspective is going to look like compared to this one, but, I mean, all I could see in the whole frame was just Bobcat. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. It was pretty killer. Well, he didn't get away from me this time. And the best part is, we didn't have to wake up the entire county in the process. 
it's gonna be nice having that scope to use for you know just another tool yeah it's really nice being able to always have this thing recording when we have stuff coming in like even with the lights once we have a, when we have the right. lights on the truck around we can actually get video with this this unit man i keep saying it but i can't get over how quiet that thing is yeah and it sure beats that thunder and boom holy smokes god that's loud i'll say this much knowing that we have something that we can go around and hunt without just completely blowing everything out of the country yeah. it's pretty nice if you think about it i'll tell you another good thing about that most of i don't know 90 percent of the spots we hunt there's houses and stuff close by you can't help it around here right yeah you know at least you're not shooting you know disturbing people or waking them up getting their dogs riled up it's good to have especially the way that that we hunt it's nice for homeowners when they've got you know a lot of the places that we hunt are small places and we have to drive by a house mm -hmm. that people are sleeping and everything else and when we go in there and and shoot at two o'clock in the morning without a suppressor it's kind of like you know you almost want to feel guilty yeah, about it i have a lot of times like, yeah oh man and they know that we're in there and they don't mind it but at the same time it's just you don't want to burden people right. whenever they're trying to sleep and all that kind of stuff but that definitely solves that problem yes it does